Hello everyone, I'm Zach Weiss, co-founder of Worn and Wound, and today I am taking a look at quite the exotic little watch. This is the Argon Space One. This is actually a prototype version, which will be coming out in May, and is a really interesting watch by some really interesting people. So let's take a look. But before I get into it, please do give us a like and subscribe to our channel. It's very much appreciated. So obviously, uh, at a glance, you can tell this is not your ordinary watch. It's not circular. It's not rectangular. It's got an exotic design to it. And it has kind of like interesting and semi-exotic story. So the people behind this watch are uh, Guillaume Lede and Theo Offray. And I apologize to both of them if I butchered their names. I am bad at, at French names. Guillaume is somebody whose work you might be more familiar with, particularly on Worn and Wound, because he is the lead creative force behind uh, the revivals of Nevada Grenchen, of Vulcane, of Excelsior Park, a few others as well. These are all brands that are, are frequently on, on the website. They're quite popular. And so he's kind of become a presence in the watch world. Also, if you happen to go to our Wind Up Watch Fairs, it's very likely that you'll meet him there. Theo Offray is also somebody you might have read about, but he's from sort of a different side of the world of horology. Manufactured a watch called the Tourbillon in Paris, made in Paris. Uh, it was a you know a high-end watch, a six-figure watch, a Tourbillon, obviously. He followed up that first watch last year with the Tourbillon Grand Sport, which was uh, quickly shortlisted for the GPHG. Once again, a very high-end watch. And so what he did with Guillaume is create an affordable watch with uh, quite the exotic look and actually a little bit of an interesting mechanical element to it as well. So the design actually I believe started as a sketch by Theo Offray and he wasn't quite sure what to do with it. Met up with Guillaume who you know is, is in the world of affordable manufacturing for watches and he was like let's turn this into a project and thus Argon and the Space One was born. And so on top of being just a very exotic looking watch, um, which also with this version you can see here is forged carbon. There are going to be three steel, titanium, and forged carbon. Features a jump hour mechanism. What's cool about that is that it increases the readability of this watch because you have a display window here, what they actually refer to as the sapphire cockpit, through which you will see three discs. At the very center is sort of like a motion disc. That's the seconds. The second disc over is the hours. The third disc is the minute. So it sort of reads like a digital readout. Now, because of how these watches sort of work, these disc driven watches, when the hour is constantly turning, it makes it sort of hard to read. You'll have points where there is no hour or there is no minute and you're just trying to figure out what it is. So by adding the jump hour mechanism, you essentially have a frozen hour. So you can always read it in a straight line and then it jumps at the top of the hour. However, there was no jump hour movement just out there for them to use. I believe there might be Dubois de Pra modules, but they're very expensive and likely wouldn't have worked in this arrangement anyway. So what did they do? They designed their own. More specifically, Theo Offray designed his own. And then they're manufacturing that module for this watch to be used with a Soprod automatic movement inside. So while quite a bit different than getting like a tourbillon by Theo Offray, you're still getting a little piece of mechanics designed by this high-end independent watchmaker in this watch. So in terms of the design itself, obviously it's really out there. It's asymmetrical, it's off-centered on the strap. It's 52 millimeters wide, about 42 millimeters top to bottom. There's no real lugs to speak of there. And about 12.6, I believe, millimeters tall. But this whole thing swoops and is very aerodynamic. I'd say it's a love it or leave it design, but if this is the kind of thing you're into, if you're into Erwerks, David Thunes, MBNFs, that sort of like vibe, this is probably something you were maybe hoping you could get your hands on and uh, well, couldn't because of the price of those other watches. On the wrist, it's also an odd wearing watch because that kind of case shape is just not gonna wear like something you're familiar with. Like I said, the strap is a little off center, so you have more of the watch coming off the back and it does taper down and there's a, that's where the crown is. So there's a protected crown. Because of that, you can get a little bit of a dig as you move your wrist around, but once again, I think this is a watch you're sort of wearing for style over ergonomics. But what is really neat about it is just how the forms of the watch all flow. Nothing's really flat. The whole thing feels like it's sculpted out of a single piece of material rather than like assembled as a watch normally would be. You know, there's no dial surface, there's no hands, there's just numbers in motion. So the whole thing just feels like, like a contraption. We were sort of joking in the office that it looks perhaps a little bit like a, a type of contraption that perhaps Batman, maybe a George Clooney or Val Kilmer era Batman might have worn. I don't know, it certainly looks like it wants to do something pointed out at you, but it is quite, quite neat like that. Also, unfortunately, if you happen to wear your watch on the right wrist, 
you're just gonna have a crown coming out and it's all gonna be hidden behind your sleeve. This is really kind of left wrist only sort of a watch. And I will say, reading it mm, isn't the easiest thing to do. So while it is great that there is a jump hour so you see the hour very easily, the minutes are a bit harder to kind of grasp at a glance. You have larger numerals printed at uh, zero and five, and then a smaller numeral printed in the, between those two, but rather than being at like 2.5, it's at three, and then nothing else is printed. So there is a bit of a kind of a guessing game for the exact minute that you're at. Not the only watch that's like that. I think a lot of these wandering kind of disc driven watches are kind of like that, but if you're somebody who needs to know the minute to the minute, this is probably gonna be a little bit frustrating to you. But regardless, I think this is all about the aesthetics. Keeping with this sort of space theme, you have different strap colors. There's an orange strap. The packaging is all sort of space theme. This is prototype packaging, so it might vary a little. This would be sealed around it. You have this sort of like NASA suit thing with the pull tab. All very cool, all very thematic. And you know, that's sort of what this is about. As to how to buy this watch, they will be going on Kickstarter May 11th. And there are three versions, like I said, steel, titanium, and carbon, starting at around 1,500 euros. I believe they are all limited editions as well with the carbon limited to 100 pieces. If you wanna stay up to date on this, the easiest way I would say is to follow Argon's Instagram, and that's just Argon Watches, one word. Um, but yeah, it's a very cool project. And perhaps for me, what's most exciting is it's like another foray into exotic watches, sort of high-end, hot concepts becoming accessible for those of us who aren't buying six figure pieces. So that's the Argon Space One. Thank you for watching. Please do like and subscribe and go check out the hands-on I wrote as well on mornandwound.com. Thank you.